Welcome back everybody to another episode of Direct Comparison. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at the recently released Final Fantasy VII Remake Intergrade and see how it stacks up to the initial release of the game from last year. For this analysis, the latest release is being played on a PlayStation 5 console and will be set primarily to its graphics mode, allowing for a dynamic resolution that targets a native 4K output. Whereas the previous release is being played on a PlayStation 4 Pro, that also features a dynamic resolution, only with a maximum output of around 1620p instead. It's also important to note that the PS5 version does offer a new performance preset that lowers the target resolution slightly to allow for a buttery smooth 60fps, something that I'm sure many users, especially those not yet running on a 4K panel, will appreciate. And what's even better is that if you already purchased this game for PlayStation 4, whether it was digitally or physically, then you can now install the PS5 version completely free. However, bear in mind that the new expansion pack featuring Yuffie is a separate paid expansion, and you are not entitled to the PS5 upgrade through the PS Plus version of the game. Also, before we begin, I want to thank PlayStation for sending me out a generous gift earlier this week that contained the two latest DualSense color schemes for the PS5, Cosmic Red and Midnight Black. If you're looking to add a bit more color variety to your DualSense collection, then I've dropped a link to the PlayStation Store page for both pads in the description below. Alright, so let's kick this comparison off by first taking a look at some character models and the texture work applied to them, starting with the lead protagonist, Cloud. Now, disregarding the obvious bump to the max resolution, Cloud himself hasn't really had his model changed all too much. The poly count is the same, all the animation work tied to the model is identical, and even the number of visible hair fibers coming from his head seem to match up exactly. However, there are still some very slight improvements that Square incorporated that are easy to miss, like some new high fidelity textures along the character's skin and clothing. This was likely done to accommodate that higher output resolution, and the results, while seemingly minor, really show during the many cinematic cutscenes throughout the game. And this of course isn't just limited to Cloud either, all of the characters in the game have seen a slight bump to their texture resolution, with the small rivets and scratches along armor plates now standing out more clearly in the scene. Granted, these aren't the most apparent upgrades, especially considering during the actual gameplay, these details are often obscured by lots of fast action and particle effects, but it's still an improvement nonetheless. Moving on, we have the environment. This was an area that I feel was in desperate need of improvement with the latest release, as there were a number of problems with the PS4 release of the game, mainly pertaining to the LOD and texture streaming. The world itself is beautifully detailed, with large draw distances, tons of NPCs, and some really striking imagery, all paying homage to the original classic. But the illusion quickly falls apart whenever these details are observed up close, with really low resolution texture work and low poly assets. However, sometimes, these details appear this way simply because the console fails to load the proper high-res textures when up close, something that's most noticeable when in the more heavily populated areas like the City Market, or the main Sector 7 slums. Thankfully, with the PlayStation 5 release of the game, this isn't as much of a problem. Objects like large signs that were previously not loading fast enough are now functioning properly with this latest release. And as Tom Morgan over at Digital Foundry pointed out, the infamous door to Cloud's apartment that never loaded properly before has been fixed as well. Now, unfortunately, not everything has been cleaned up as much as I would have hoped. I found numerous details throughout the game that weirdly look like they're still loading some low-quality placeholder asset for some reason. Many textures look flat and muddy, and while rare, there are still a few instances where textures will pop in on screen. Another major issue I had with the initial remake release was the weirdly designed skyboxes most noticeable when climbing extremely tall structures or fighting along the upper catwalks. The skyboxes themselves are impressive, establishing an incredible sense of scale into what's admittedly a small playable space. But because the player has complete control of the camera, the force perspective is very easily shattered when adjusting the y-axis, and it makes the entire city of Midgar feel like it's nestled within some kind of crater, rather than actually spanning out along a flat surface like it should be. The skybox itself also feels noticeably distinct from the actual rendered environments, appearing like a low-res image file and ruining the effect. Though, with the latest PS5 release, that problem has been rectified a little bit, as most of the skyboxes have been redesigned with more detail, and the volumetric lighting effects do help to blend them into the game world more naturally. 
but I do feel as though they could have extended the rendered area a bit more, and pushed that skybox out further to help make this design choice less apparent. But thankfully, the skybox is only really apparent at distinct scenes throughout the 40-some hour campaign, and the areas that the player will be seeing more of are given a little bit of a boost as well, with some higher resolution textures applied to the surface of walls and the ground, similar to how higher res textures have been applied to the character models. And this, along with the improvements to the texture streaming and the updated skybox, help to deliver the definitive version of Midgar. Next up, we have lighting. This is an area that has received a surprising amount of changes. The light design has been tweaked in practically every scene, with a large increase to the density of volumetric lighting, greatly altering the look and feel of several key scenes. This opening sequence, for example, where Cloud jumps off the train and we're given that heroic reveal, has had the density of the fog increased a good amount allowing blue light to reflect off of it, and giving it a darker, more mysterious look overall. And while it looks cool at first, it does also hide some of that nice specular lighting and texture detail that we had before. But thankfully, this is one of maybe two or three key sections in the game where this problem exists, and most of the time, the changes that were made to the lighting do benefit the artistic presentation, allowing the city streets to glow at night more believably, and enhancing the look of this church, giving it a dustier, more abandoned look. However, I did encounter a very strange change to the visual design that I believe hurts the presentation of the later Shinra building stages, where the screen space reflections no longer reflect light on the marbled floors. My guess is that this isn't intentional. There's still hints of this effect that can be spotted underneath some of the kiosks in the building, so hopefully we'll see some sort of patch for this later down the road. And next up, we have effects. The effects are another area that have received only a minor alteration. All the base effects like the flames from environmental fires or the water surface in areas like the sewers look about the same. And while it's difficult to tell for sure due to its variable nature, I failed to notice any actual increase to the particle density, something that I feel the original release already did a perfectly fine job with. However, it is worth reiterating that because of the screen space reflections no longer working properly, battles near more reflective areas feel muted now, as the particles are also no longer being reflected. Moving on, let's talk about some of the new features that have been added with this updated version of the game. Now, I mentioned before that you can swap to a new 60fps mode with the PS5 release, which by itself is reason enough to replay the game again. But they also finally added in the long requested photo mode with this release allowing you to capture your favorite moments at a native 4K resolution, regardless of the graphics mode you have selected. However, I would like to see this toolset expanded upon still. In its current state, the camera feels extremely limited, locked to the player's position with very little room for wide angles. And the field of view slider doesn't really help all that much. There's a few filters, brightness settings, and the ability to tilt the camera too. But considering the great camera tools we've seen in the most recent releases on this platform, this one does feel a bit lacking. This new version of Final Fantasy VII Remake also takes advantage of the PS5's unique DualSense controllers, adding advanced haptic feedback to the game so that you can feel each and every hit. But it is subtle and doesn't quite take full advantage of the device like, say, the most recent Ratchet & Clank game, though I honestly can't think of how they'd incorporate things like the trigger locks organically into the gameplay without it feeling gimmicky. Finally, there's the biggest new feature, the paid expansion pack starring Yuffie. This brand new story campaign isn't very big, and will take you only about 4 hours to play through. Though it does at least introduce a brand new weapon set to master, along with plenty of additional side activities to give players an excuse to explore Midgar further. It's also fun to see the main Final Fantasy VII Midgar storyline explored from a different angle, which I'm sure fans will get a kick out of. Finally, let's wrap up with a brief sound comparison. I personally didn't notice much of a difference here, but at the very least, this section will give you a chance to see how the new 60fps performance mode changes the overall feel of the experience. But still, I'm curious to hear what you guys think. Which version of the game do you feel has the better sound quality and design?
Get down here, Merc. Internals can be overloaded. Lightning magic. Huh. No other option, huh? Internals can be overloaded. Lightning magic. Huh. No other option, huh? And that wraps up this episode of Direct Comparison. Overall, Final Fantasy VII Remake Intergrade is a modest improvement to the 2020 remake. It certainly looks better in pretty much every area, but some of the more blaring visual issues like the design of the skybox and the many low-quality environmental props are still present here. And some of the latest visual enhancements like the increased volumetric lighting sometimes drown out details that looked fine before. So while yes, the graphics do experience a net gain overall, I think the biggest reason to double dip here if you're a PS5 owner is the additional Yuffie expansion, along with the new 60fps performance mode that I feel greatly improves the flow of the action. Also, if you haven't tried out Final Fantasy VII Remake at all yet, and are looking for something to play on your PS5, now is the perfect time to finally jump in and give it a try. But what do you guys think? Are you impressed with Final Fantasy VII Remake on the PS5? Or were you expecting more? Let me know in the comments section. And if you want to learn more about the remake, be sure to check out my full breakdown of the game and how it stacks up to the original masterpiece from 97. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this posted every week.